Good morning, everyone. Yes, it is 12 o'clock. I hope we are all well. I hope we're all keeping safe. Um, you're welcome to this um, interactive learning session for employers and business owners. Um, you're all welcome. Thank you for being on time. Thank you for being prompt. And it is exactly 12 o'clock and we'll be kicking off. Okay, so yes, um, we will we'll be talking about leadership and business sustainability. This is actually like a part two of this um, uh, of this like all its series. We had the first session um, with um, Adebola Williams last month, and it was awesome, a beautiful, fantastic session. And I am sure definitely today is not going to be any less. In fact, I'm so excited for our guest speaker who is currently with us here today. Okay, I will do some more introduction as we move along. Okay, so let's just dive right in into what we have for today. Okay, so I'll just, yes, I'll introduce myself. My name is Chidema Ihiana Cho. I'm your host for this um, learning session. I'm the Senior Youth Engagement Associate at Jobberman. Okay, and this is our outline. We will be, you know, we'll just I'll just give a brief um, introduction uh, about Jobberman Youth Engagement and then move on to introduce our guest speaker. Then we'll have a presentation by Indidi Mwuneli and move on to the Q&A session before we wrap up with the closing. Okay, so um, I'll just give a brief run through um, about Jobberman. Jobberman is the number one online recruitment platform here in Nigeria uh, with over 2 million candidates and 60,000 plus employers. Basically, our focus and our goal is to match job seekers to employers, to the employment opportunity we have there. We also provide other bespoke services. We provide best match skills assessments. If you're having issues getting or challenges, getting the right people to do the job or you want to test their capability, we have skills assessment um, packages for you. So please feel free to go on to www.jobberman.com and you'll see the beautiful and awesome packages we have. Okay, and then Jobberman Youth Engagement. The Jobberman Youth Engagement is, is a new arm of Jobberman. We actually launched this in February. Um, we are the Youth Engagement Arm is committed to upskilling 5 million young people and placing 3 million of them in dignified work within the next five years. This is our ambitious goal and we plan to achieve it. Thanks to MasterCard Foundation, who are partners and sponsors for this, um, we are able to provide free um, training services, free soft skills training to young people. We currently have a soft skills training going on. So if you, if you have, um, if you have friends, family, colleagues, you know, co-workers, you want to, um, you, you think would benefit from this free soft skills training, please do not hesitate to reach out to us and we'll gladly onboard them in the training. Okay, um, so um, moving on without wasting much time, oh, I'm so excited to introduce our guest speaker. Okay, um, Indidi Umwoneli is well known. She's, I mean, she is a leader. She is a business leader. She's um, someone who we should all look up to. I'm going to read the profile just for a few minutes now. Um, I, I'm going to read her profile. So please bear with me as I read her profile. Mrs. Indidi, Mrs. Indidi Okonkwo Umwoneli is an expert on African agriculture and nutrition philanthropy and social innovation. She has over 25 years of international development experience and is a recognized serial entrepreneur, author, public speaker, and consultant. Through her work in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors, she has led the design and execution of high impact initiatives focused on policy, strategy, organizational design, ecosystem solutions, and growth. Indidi Umuneli is the managing partner of Sahel Consulting Agriculture and Nutrition Limited, which works across West Africa, shaping agricultural policy, creating catalytic ventures, and implementing ecosystem solutions. She is also the co-founder of Ace Foods, which sources 
from over 10,000 farmers and produces a range of packaged spices, seasonings, and cereals for local and international markets. She is the founder of Leap Africa, which inspires, empowers, and equips a new cadre of principled, disciplined, and dynamic young leaders in Africa. Indeed, she started her career as a management consultant with McKinsey and Company, working in the Chicago, New York, and Johannesburg offices. She holds an MBA from Harvard Business School and an undergraduate degree with honors from the Watson School of the University of Pennsylvania. She was a senior fellow at the Mosava Romani Center for Business and Government at the Harvard Kennedy School and Aspen Institute New Voices Fellow. Indeed, it was recognized as a young global leader by the World Economic Forum and received a national honor from the Nigerian government. Indeed, it serves on the board of Rockefeller Foundation, um, Agra, Nigerian Bureaus, um, Godred Consumer Products Limited, India, Fairfax Africa Holdings, Canada, Business Day Newspapers, Royal DSM Sustainability Board, Netherlands, and the African Philanthropy Forum. It is the author of Social Innovation in Africa, a practical guide for scaling impact, published by Rutledge, her new book titled Food Entrepreneurs in Africa, Scaling Resilient Agricultural Businesses will be published by Ruth Lett in 2020. She is a TED Global Speaker, and her work has been featured on CNN, BBC, and a range of international and local media outlets. Oh, awesome. Oh, we are so glad to have you here, Indidi. Thank you so much for, for granting us this, this uh, privilege and uh, this opportunity to hear from you. Um, so please, um, everyone, join me in welcoming. Thank you so much, Ki Jobberman. I'm a big fan of Jobberman, and I've supported you guys from the very beginning. Thank and you. And I'm so much. proud to see how far you've gotten as an organization. Thank you. Thank you very much. The floor is yours, madam. So please, you can go right ahead. We'll take questions and answers after your speaking session. Uh, thank you. I'll stop. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I have a presentation which my colleague Ifeo Munna is sharing. So we'll just uh, walk through it. Um, so basically, uh, I'm going to just start up by talking about the current crisis we are facing as a nation, um, and then what what entrepreneurs should be doing at the time uh, to promote leadership and sustainability, and then we'll we'll take questions. So just to go to the next slide, basically we're all facing a crisis. I started as a health crisis and now it's an economic crisis. Some people were sharing that, that pounds is now 600 naira to the dollar. Uh, a 600 naira, uh, one pound is 600 naira, one dollar is 480 naira. So clearly there's an economic crisis, the devaluation, inflation, um, and we're expecting a degrowth in GDP, a negative GDP this year. There's also a social crisis, um, which has affected our education sector and so many other challenges. And then we're seeing an emotional crisis. And when we delve into SMEs in particular, 84% of the SMEs we interface with, this report was actually conducted by GAIN, uh, say that their business has been impacted by the pandemic. They've experienced decreased sales. 84% have reported in their production volume. 85% anticipate future impacts on their supply chain. So clearly across the board, there's a real sense that this pandemic had a huge burden on SMEs. Now I operate as a co-founder of a few SMEs. In the intro, um, one of them was mentioned, Ace Foods. We're 11 years old this year. Um, we process food for the local and international market. I hope that all of you Ling in have used our product. And then I'm also the co-founder managing partner of Sahel Consulting. And uh, we operate a office in Abuja and Lagos. And then we have team members all over the country, at least five states in Nigeria. We have uh, collaborators across the continent. And through these organizations, I experienced firsthand the challenge of being an entrepreneur in Nigeria the, at this time. I'm also the, the founder of Africa, and Leap is eight years old. Um, and works on leadership development, sustainability, ethics, and a whole range of interventions, of course, on helping uh, young people build 
uh, become social entrepreneurs, but also transform the landscape. So at this time, I'm sure the Bola covered this in his session. We have to change our mindsets. We have to change our mindsets. We have to change our mindsets. I've said that three times because a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. And they are key attributes and skill leaders at this time. If we please change the side. So we require entrepreneurs, young people, even employees, it's a visionary. You have to be willing to disrupt, you have to be willing to redesign. You have to be willing to show empathy, both within your organization and internally. You have to be committed to managing your costs, because as I said, it's a long-term battle. And plan for what happened in the short-term, long-term with your business. You also have to be willing to embrace technology, collaborate, and shape your ecosystem. And as you think about your business, and my assumption is a few people listening are either entrepreneurs, or they want to be entrepreneurs in the future, or they work within an organization where they can be entrepreneurs. Every organization needs to think about its business model and how to reflect its business model at this time. We need talent, we need to be conscious about we're telling our story and branding, and we need to be able to leverage lots of support. So in my first book, it covers six components of business models that scale. First, your business has to be demand-driven. Your model has to have measurable impact. It has to be simple, it has to engage the community, it has to leverage technology, and it has to be low cost. And I don't know if I mentioned why I wrote the book or if I had caught up from then, but I said that I had started all these initiatives that were reaching hundreds or thousands, but not millions. So I spent a year interviewing entrepreneurs across the continent to find out what it would take for them to scale. And this year, I'm launching a new book uh, called Food Entrepreneurs in Africa, Scaling Resilient Agriculture Businesses. And you can see that the model has been refined considerably because I've realized that right now, especially with COVID-19, we have to build in resilience into our DNA. We have to build companies that will outlive us and survive future shocks because COVID-19 is one shock, but there are going to be many, many more future shocks. So I'm going to be taking each of these things one at a time. The first is your business model. Your business model has to be demand driven. It means that there have to be enough people who are willing to pay for this service. And the first thing we figured out is that so many of us come up with great ideas, but they're not demand driven. What does this mean? A few of our friends like them, a few hundred people will pay for them, but millions will not pay for them. One of the entrepreneurs I'm profiling in my next book is a young dynamic entrepreneur from South Africa. He had a great idea to basically export high-end meat from Africa to the rest of the world. South Africa has great barbecues, great sausages, but then he quickly found out that the standards in many of these countries were too high and they were not willing to accept what we had to offer. So guess what? He pivoted to pet food. He realized that people are willing to spend three times what they'll spend on themselves on their pets. And now through his business, he exports pet food to 12 countries in the world, pet food from South Africa. He makes private label products. And the truth is many of us have never thought of pet food as a business opportunity. And he found this business opportunity and he maximized it. In addition, there are other exciting business models, leveraging innovation and technology. Cow Tribe is another one and Cow Tribe uses digital technology to provide information to farmers who are in the livestock industries about when to vaccinate their cows, how to care for their cows or goats or whatever. And Swiga, that has been able to raise over $60 million, basically supplies fresh fruits to the road sellers in Kenya, in Nairobi, uh, using digital technology. And these are just examples of two companies that are raising money and changing mindsets in this sector because they've gotten an approach that is demand driven. Ace Foods is also another example. When we started Ace Foods, my first product was going to be jam. At that time, I thought, oh, I love mango jam. I love abwa more jam. I love pineapple jam. And we only have one type of jam, every jam. But then I quickly realized money on Nigerian 
products, Nigerian jam. And the, the average Nigerian didn't even use jam and didn't understand jam and didn't value jam. And so you have to make sure that your ideas are demand driven. After one year of trying to get an NAVDAC number and buying all this equipment, we soon realized that our product was obsolete. Beyond finding your business model, you have to tell your story. So many of us struggle with financing because people don't know us. They don't know our story. We have to be able to market ourselves and package ourselves to build credibility so that we can be well known in the marketplace. And there are a few companies that have done this really well. I don't know how many of you have heard of Hello Tractor. We're now on the page with Hello Tractor. Can you hear me now or is it still unclear? Somebody was noting that it was unclear. We can hear you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So Hello Tractor started in Nigeria and it's basically supposed to be Uber of Tractor. And the idea behind Hello Tractor was you basically can help farmers access equipment, machinery like trucks for their business. Um, and what he did was basically now build a software company. He markets to entrepreneurs and to John Deere, like Caterpillar software. And they've helped him expand not only to African countries, but also India. When I interviewed him, when I interviewed Jahel for my book, he said, indeed, I wake up in the morning and I actually listen to the podcast of the CEO of all the companies I want to partner with so that when I meet them, I'm speaking their language. He knows how to tell his story. He knows how to package him. And he's done a fantastic job. Java Foods is another example. And Java Foods is based in Zambia. And they basically, Monica, who started Java Foods, used to work with Dango in Nigeria. And when she was here, she observed how well Indomie had done in the Nigerian context. And she said, I'm going to create a Zambian example of Indomie. She's created Java Foods. And she's built a whole story around it and a whole marketplace around it. And she's doing extremely well. Now, beyond your brand, you have to be able to be investment ready. So many young people complain they can't get funding for their business. And the truth is that from my first book and second book, I realized more funding available for African entrepreneurs than we are able to take advantage of them. But that most of our companies are not invest ready and not all money is good money. So you have to be very discerning when you're attracting funding and to determine what funding is right for you. On the next page, I have listed grants and prizes and venture capital and private equity. There are lots of opportunities for convertible debt and crowdfunding and challenge funds. But to be able to take advantage of this money, you have to make sure you have a board of directors, you're credible, you have strong systems and structures, and strong governance institutions. You know, when we started Ace Foods, the first thing we did was constitute a board. And many people don't realize how important board is. They say, I have to have money to have a board, I have to have uh, a, a track record. Nobody will be on my board, but you have to have a board because nobody wants to invest in an individual. They want to invest in an institution that will live you. Uh, what we've studied is that there are many accelerators and hubs all over the place helping startups. In Nigeria, we have CC Hub, quite popular, but there are so many other hubs apart from CC Hub right in our backyard. And all over the continent, there are lots of hubs and lots of institutions that are supporting startups. And we also know that entrepreneurs have to raise money and think about exits from the beginning. It's not just enough to raise money. You have to also think about how the investor is going to be able to pull their money out and make a profit from the onset. And then you have to be able to attract and retain talent. I'm so happy to hear that Jabberman is building the soft skills of organizations and individuals because your staff are the ones who really determine the success of your organization. And they're the ones who carry the vision a lot. I love this quote, which I recently posted on my Twitter handle, which is, if you tell someone a dream, you know, they only believe it, maybe, but if you involve them in your dream, it becomes their dream too. And that's what I've done with the organization started with Leap Africa. I have a young team running it now. And Fetai was like 31 years old. He's such a dynamic leader. They're now in six African countries. Uh, Ace Foods is 
Temi Jebu is 36 years old and he runs the organization. He's our managing director. He's been with us six years and has equity. You know, you're building organizations and empowering people to build their organizations. Ifi Umunna, who is on the platform now, is actually running Nourishing Africa and 26 years old. Ifi, sorry for sharing your age. The point is, I believe young people can run organizations and that we can be empowered to lead, but they need the skills, the tools, and the support. And we have so many examples of organizations that have been able to do that across Africa and new country, 300 volunteers who are um, and very few full staff relative to the number of volunteers. And then you have to build partnerships. There's no organization that can really survive generations and scale and be sustainable without partnerships. You heard Jebberman talk about their partnership with the MasterCard Foundation. That's just one example that just Africa and Google in one. And this is a very good example of a company that has done extremely well in building partnerships. If you see this slide, if please move to Africa and Improved Foods, you see that they have not only funding from the CDC, the uh, DSM, FMO, IFC, they also have a partnership with Rwanda government. Now, this company produces seven tons per hour of food and supplies it across the continent, across East Africa at least, and they've done so well. And that's just an example of what we can do if we partner. And then finally, you have to plan for exit and succession. You know, I would say that every leader, it doesn't matter if you're in the political sector, the private sector, or the nonprofit sector, you have to plan your succession from day one. You have to plan for what will happen when you're not there. Even if you have a position as a manager in a company, or even if it's an analyst in a company, you have to say, what will happen if I'm not here? And how can I make sure that I groom somebody to release me because I'm moving up high? Um, and with most of the companies, you know, we, we want them to think of what will happen post the engagement. And that's why it's so important to plan for your succession and for exit. So what are some actions re required at this time? I, I start rounding up. I think entrepreneurs listening, COVID-19 is a bittersweet experience. It's an opportunity to build back better. You have to build back better. You have to use this as an opportunity to pivot strategically. You cannot come out of this experience and your are still to ensure the well-being of all your employees and other critical stakeholders. You have to stabilize your business. You have to build resilience. You have to adapt to the new reality. You know, before COVID, if you had asked me, indeed, did you get involved in the shaping policy? I No, 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 no. I don't even get to know who the governor is. I don't, I don't have to ask somebody for favors. I can run my ovation on my own. I pay taxes. But COVID-19 has shown me that I have to be involved in shaping policy around me. And what happened when, when COVID-19 uh, struck? It's very alarmed that they had actually not recognized the food value chain during that when the governor's forum issued the directive that they identified and they allowed the free movement of people who were involved in the food ecosystem. And yet, we're still facing a food crisis. And so we're still involved in policy around that. Similarly, if you're an employee, this is a time you to retool. There's so many free online programs. You have to retool, you have to build new skills, you have to read widely, you have to reimagine what your role is going to post COVID-19 and how you can add value in the organization that you're on. You have to build a support system and invest in relationships. So many young people feel isolated and are dealing with mental health crisis at this time because they don't have very deep support networks and relationships. So I think while Ndidi is trying to reconnect, I'm just gonna give a quick overview of Nourishing Africa. We recently built a online digital business that is aimed at helping entrepreneurs um, either rebuild their businesses from the ground up uh, given COVID-19 period or scale up their businesses um, through this period. And uh, during this time, we've been able to create a dedicated COVID-19 page with new functionalities that essentially are aimed at providing information and resources for this purpose. 
So I'd employ everyone to go to nourishingafrica.com um, for more information on that. And at Sahel, we've also um, engaged and redesigned the way we um, engage in corporate social responsibility, which we call CSB. And this is through various, um, instead of doing a Sahel Scholars program, which we've been doing every year, which are physical events aimed at um, providing trainings and um, conferences for youth at various universities, we've changed and pivoted our business models um, and the way we engage to be a online program. And we've not only introduced it to students, but we've now uh, created an online educators and researchers conference, which is aimed at providing information and, um, and tools to the people that are going to shape the minds of our youth for years to come. And as I said, we've recently launched Nourishing Africa, which is what we hope to be a home for a million entrepreneurs who will drive sustainable change in the agriculture and food space across Africa. And what Nourishing Africa does is essentially provide tools, information, and resources for these businesses, um, ranging from multiple programs, um, advertisements, and, and visibility for these entrepreneurs, and many other things. And one of the um, key aspects that we're engaging in and we're about to launch soon is a um, COVID-19 recovery plan and program which is essentially linked and shaped to help entrepreneurs um, recover from what has happened as a result of COVID-19 and see how they can pivot their business models in order to ensure that they're not only resilient, but they can withstand future shocks and they understand um, the key aspects of growing their businesses very similar to what NDD had said previously, um, and ensuring that they can do this. So we have a four-step program which will be launching soon. So just keep a lookout for that as well. Um, at Nourishing Africa, we also shifted our business models from being predominantly um, offline in terms of our engagement and our workshops to being online and being dedicated to uh, providing webinars and um, events that are now strictly online and are targeted at um, issues and barriers that are entrepreneurs, excuse me, that are entrepreneurs are facing. Sorry, uh, and, sorry, Ify, um, it is back, so sorry to, yeah, cut you, so if we could just, um, you know, if you could um, just round up so we can have Indidi continue with her presentation. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so I'm just rounding up. Thank you, Ify. The slide, uh, the next slide after this basically is rounding up. It says a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. I know that many of us are apprehensive. The truth is that this period is, is going to be with us for 12 to 18 months. COVID is still around for 12 to 18 months. We're just gonna have to learn to live with this new normal. But where there is a crisis, there's also an opportunity. And so as I was telling my team in Abuja yesterday, we have to change our mindset. Where there are problems, we have to see opportunities. You know, in this COVID-19 era, while some people have lost a lot of money, some people have gotten extremely wealthy. And those are the people who saw opportunities where others saw problems. Those are the people who ran ahead and said, how can I pivot where others saw challenges? And so oftentimes I always ask young people, I say, it's not too early to start thinking about the legacy you want to leave in this world, in this country. What legacy are you living and what legacy will you be leaving for your children, for your businesses, for your community, for your country, through what you leave behind? What you, will you be remembered for when you're gone? And it's really, if we live with this legacy mindset as leaders and as business owners, our country would not be the same because we'll not just be living for the moment, we'll be living for the future. So some parting thoughts. I think in this period, this is a time to be innovative. This is a time to partner. This is a time to revisit your business model. This is a time to actually raise funding. This is a time to rethink your whole team. And this is a time to rethink your future. And as you think about it, consider being the first, but never the last. Leave a door for somebody else to open. Mentor at least one other person. Educate at least one other person. Groom at least one other person and think about the future generations and the future impact of your work. I'm convinced that if we really change our mindsets, we can emerge from this crisis stronger than ever before. And that our businesses will be stronger, we as individuals will be stronger. But if we don't change our mindset, don't embrace this challenge at this time, then we'll definitely wake up and the world will be a different place. 
So I'll stop here and take some questions from you. And again, I apologize for all the challenges with the connectivity. Thank you very much, Indidi. We, we understand that. Um, you know, you have to do what you have to do, you know, and despite all that, you still made yourself available. So we appreciate your being here. Thank you very much. Um, so I have a couple of questions here. Um, so I'll just read out um, what I have. How can we sustain a business within this pandemic? Um, I, oh, I'm, I'm, do we still have anything to do with us? I'm not sure if, um, if she's still here. Okay. Yes, I can see. I can see um, it is still here, thankfully. So do, maybe we'll just take the questions one after the other. Please drop your questions in the chat box. Um, I'll be reading the questions from the chat, okay? I'm not unmuting everyone. If we unmute everyone, it's going to be very, you know, it's going to be rowdy. So please drop your questions in the in the chat box. Thank you very much. Okay, Indidi, I don't know if you're connected. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can, uh, if you're still with us. Okay, okay. Yes, I, did, you, did you get the first question? Yes, I can hear you. Were you did you get the first question? Please repeat the first. Okay. Um, how can we sustain? How can we sustain? Okay, I'll, I'll read it now. How can we sustain a business within this pandemic? Uh, I guess we're having um, internet challenges again. Um, don't worry, guys. We'll just try to see if we'll see if we could share the the recording after this. Okay, so we'll, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> well, if the slides could be shared, maybe that will help as well. If we get the slides from um, uh, from Indidi, so we'll just see what we can do. But um, I know it is experiencing some network challenges. Oh, wow. I guess it is offline. Um, Ify, please, can you confirm if it is offline or is she trying to rejoin? She is trying to rejoin. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, let's give her a minute to do that. Sorry, everyone. Um, let's just give her a minute to rejoin so we can take, we can take um, a few questions. So please, in the interim, drop your questions in the in the um, chat box if you have questions or probably uh, yes if you, if you could send a, a, an email or for you know something or a platform where you know she could actually look at the questions or answer more questions then that would probably be helpful okay we'll do that. thank you Hmm. Just watching, just checking to see if in the days back online. Okay, not yet. Not yet. Oh, but that was a very interesting um, session. Just that the internet didn't allow us enjoy it, um, enjoy it smoothly. But um, we will see if we can share the recordings afterward uh, with, with everyone. Yes. Okay, still watching out for Indidi. Um, I know we have the next 10 minutes for Q&A, and I would really love for her to answer some questions that are dropping in here. If people are asking for the slides, would you be able to share the slides? I would have to ask. Anything. Okay, okay. 
Okay, please do. So for those asking, um, if we were able to get it, then we will share with you. <laughs> okay, so please um, just can keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> Okay, I can see questions dropping in. Yes, please drop your questions. Please drop your questions. Um, hopefully we can get in the, the back online to, to answer, answer these questions. Wow, internet challenges, right? This is one area I know <laughs> we still have a long way to go, but hopefully we'll get there. Um, at some point, um, if we're not able to have, we may have to just collate. We'll probably have to collate the questions and you know share the responses via email. But we'll see. I'm hoping we can get her back online. Um, I'm hoping we can. I am hoping we can get her back online. Yeah, I think what I'm trying to do is just call her directly so she can speak through my phone onto the... Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, that, that's another option. Sorry guys, please just hang in there for a few minutes. Thank you for, for you know, sticking with us <laughs> this while. Um, hopefully we could get her on mobile network instead of on the internet and, and you know, she'll get to respond to our questions. Okay, so please hang in there with us. Thank you very much, everyone. We appreciate you. Okay, I can see some comments. Yes, I can see some good questions. I'm hoping we'll have enough time. Hmm. Don't worry if we couldn't hear. Um, we'll, we'll request permission to share the slides. Um, if we're obliged, we'll be able to share the slides. Okay, so please bear with us. I know the network was um uh, was a major challenge, and I know the it kept it kept fluctuating. But we'll see if if we can. We'll try to see if we could share the the slides and the videos with everyone. So please hang in there. Okay. Well, yes, um, we can share experiences as well. Um, what has worked for you? Um, I know we have different organizations here, of different um, entrepreneurs and business owners. Um, we're talking about sustainability leadership. Do you have some, um, what, what tools or what, what have you done, you know, to, to keep yourself afloat during this, this um, COVID-19 um, period? Please, let's, let's engage in the chats. Um, let's engage in the chats, please. Um, if you'd if um if you have some experiences you would like to share while we wait for Indidi to come back on, I think we could keep ourselves engaged that way. Okay. Um, if you have something like or an experience or or, or you know something that has worked for you, that has worked for your team, that has worked for your organization, please share in the chat box. Um, yes, please share in the chat box. Or if all, we would love to hear from you. Okay. So All right. Can you hear oh, me? Awesome. Oh, finally. <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Um, can everyone hear in the deep? Can everyone else hear in the deep? Please confirm if you can hear in the chat box so we know we could go like this. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I apologize. I'm in Lagos. Uh, the third mainland bridge is closed. Oh, yes. And we were trying to get, get through it before this call so that we could have uninterrupted Wi-Fi. But unfortunately, 
Oh. We are contending with the forces of uh, Lagos. Uh, and uh, it's been a nightmare. <laughs> so I apologize. You can't plan everything so closely. So please forgive me, but that's the life okay. of the entrepreneur. We can, we can relate to that. But participants are asking if, if there's a way we can get an adopted or adapted slide, you know, because we, we um, the flow wasn't so smooth, but if we, uh, due to the internet challenges, or if there's a slide that could be shared, and uh, we could share to to everyone who was on this call. So I don't know if that's a possibility. Uh, do we still have Indidu with us? <laughs> or oh, we've lost her again? Uh, if we can you please confirm if we still have her with us? Oh, next on your, your yes. I said we'll share some of our slides. No problem. Oh, thank we'll you. Live. And would love to have as many of the people log on to nourishingafrica.com, especially if you're an entrepreneur in the food and agriculture landscape, because then you can benefit from funding, training, and all the support we can provide. If you can type nourishingafrica.com into the chat box, because okay. on that chat box, uh, we already have a lot of podcasts and trainings on how to build sustainable businesses mm. during this time. And we also have a, a lot of segments on Ask an Expert, where we've asked experts to answer specific questions around financing. Um, and you can find all of those responses on nourishingafrica.com. But to address the first question on business sustainability, I think there are three things, if you ask me, and I think I try to address them in my presentation. In every business, the most important thing is your customer base. How are you engaging with your current or potential customer base during this period? Are you keeping them informed? Are you staying connected to them? Are you finding out how their needs are changing and how you can change with them? Number two, cash is king. How are you managing money? I mentioned that so many people have had to do scenario planning and have had to think through how to cut costs during this time. How are you managing money? How are you taking advantage of all the free money that's available to entrepreneurs? So much money is available, but are you ready to take it? Are you investment ready? Do you have your audited financials from 2019? Do you have your financial statements? Will your banker give you a good endorsement letter? And do you have a board of directors? You need to show your investment ready. You have to manage your money. And number three, how are you pivoting? How are you pivoting? How are you pivoting? How are you leveraging technology and innovation to pivot? And pivoting means you're going to have to change an aspect of your business. We gave the example of how ACE has modified their business model. We gave an example of different organizations and how they've modified their business model. So I think it's really critical for all of us to rethink our business model and see how we can modify and update our business model. So those are just three ideas. If you're someone who was making biscuits before, Biscuits are not an essential item. You might have to say connected with the bread. If you're someone who was selling hair weaves before, or makeup before, now so many people aren't going to work. What can you do differently? How can you change your business model? Given what you have, the skills you have, the tools you have, the knowledge you have, what new thing can you introduce? And the beauty of this period is that the world is your oyster. You're not just limited to Nigeria. If you have a digital business, you can serve the world. So how are you doing that? So I'll take another question, if you guys can still hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much. Um, we, we heard you loud and clear. <laughs> Thank you. So let me just take, I'll probably take like two more questions and then we'll um, wrap this up. Um, what's, what are the measures taken by your organization to bring about lasting solutions to business and food security? Okay. So, you know, I, I wear many hats, so I'm going to start with the Ace Foods hat. Ace Foods is a food processing company, our factory is in Sangota. And what we do is we process food sourced locally. We work with about 10,000 farmers. We produce spices. We produce complementary food like beans, flour, and soya maize. We produce seasonings. And when we think about the long term, we know that homegrown food is the order of the day. In fact, those companies that weren't buying from us before COVID-19 are now buying from us because of the 
devaluation of our currency because of how difficult it is to import products from other parts of the world right now. So we've actually seen a doubling in sales in the last two months at East Food, which is a fantastic thing. And what we would love to see is more Nigerian companies sourcing locally. And what we've done that's unique is that we've identified a local supply chain. And we've built relationships all the way down to the farm, farm gate. And so our farmers have worked with us over time. And that's our competitive advantage because we can have traceability in periods where there are shocks and where other companies are struggling to import the spices they were using. We have a steady stream of, uh, of people who provide for us. And what we're doing through our business is we're also reducing post-harvest losses. 40 to 60% of our fruits and vegetables, 20 to 30% of our grains go to waste. So Ace Foods is processing food locally, not only displacing imports, addressing malnutrition, but also reducing post-harvest losses. Now, Sahel Consulting works across West Africa, and we're doing a lot in Yam and Cassava around seed systems. We have long-term projects. And the project I'm so excited about where I spent the last 10 days with my team is a team working on dairy. It's called Advancing Local Dairy Development in Nigeria. We have operations in Jikawa, Kaduna, Katsina, Kanu, and Plata State. And what we're doing is helping private companies that were ordinarily sourcing imported milk to source locally, to buy from the nomadic communities around their factories. And we're training these nomadic communities to make sure they can meet standards. And we're equipping them with solar card boreholes, milk collection centers, and all they need to be able to supply milk so they can generate income, so they can, can be uh, stabilized. They don't have to be traveling around Nigeria in search of fodder. So this has been such an exciting project and it's a five-year project funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I have a whole team working on it, a team of young people who are so excited about this sector. And this project is so exciting because it also empowers women, it empowers rural communities, and it transforms life and also improves the nutritional status of our people so that our children can drink fresh milk and yogurt and it's affordable and accessible. So my dear, I'm doing a lot in food ecosystem. I'm also shaping policy, writing a vision 2050 for Nigeria, all activity for agriculture, security and rural development, and involved in quite a few initiatives. And I think this sector is really the silver bullet. It will not only create jobs, it will transform lives. So I really encourage you to look at the opportunities in the agriculture and food ecosystem. Thank you very much. So I'm just going to take one more question. I think somebody was asking about opportunities, funding opportunities for startups. But I know you mentioned something about that on Nourish in Africa, but let me let you respond to that. Yes, I'm still going to put a plug for North Africa. If you don't take anything away from this session, take away the word Nourishing Africa. Go on the website, nourishingafrica.com, and search by funding. And under funding, put in Nigeria, if you live in Nigeria, if you live in Kenya, put in Kenya. And search, and you see all the different opportunities for startups, incubators, accelerators. There are lots and lots and lots of opportunities. So please go and search. And some of the deadlines are coming up quickly and make sure your investment are ready. Make sure you can fill out those applications with a compelling business model and don't make stuff up, put in the truth. Um, and the funding is there for you. So please go ahead and, and do the, the necessary activities required. Okay, thank you very much. I can well, see. Thank you so much. Again, yes. I apologize for all the difficulty. I'm, I'm the type of person when I say I'm gonna do something, I do it. So um, as you no. can imagine, I didn't plan for this, and I do apologize again to Jobberman, and I thank you for this opportunity, thank and wish you. you all a fantastic end of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you for, you know, making out time from your busy schedule to be with us. We appreciate you. Thank all you. right. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. So, um, everyone, thank you for sticking with us. Um, I'm just going to quickly run through some amazing offers we have at Jabberman because um, to build the right team, um, you need to ensure that you have um, different um, sources. You have um, the opportunity or access to um, access to to information, right? So, with Jabberman, we are helping businesses um, at this time 
with free job listings. So if you're probably here thinking, oh, how can I get, you know, how can I hire the right people? We are here for you. But before I go right in, I want to talk about a virtual career fair. This is also an opportunity to have access to uh, candidates, to uh, or rather young people who have been trained on the Jebberman soft skills training. So to be a part of this career fair, if, you, if you're looking for an opportunity to have access to qualified candidates, to people who can support your business, you know, uh, and, and you know, drive your vision, right? Um, please send an email to connect at jobberman.com and you know, we will we'll definitely get in touch with you and give you more information on how you can be a part of the virtual career fair. It's virtual, by the way, it's online. It's not offline. We're not gathering people into a room. This is a virtual career fair. If you're looking to hire people, then you are the right place. Okay, then free job ads. Um, also, we are, we, have, we are running a free basic um, job listing. You can have access to uh, over 2 million uh, job seekers uh, who are you know, out there looking for you know, different opportunities. So if you want to have access to this, please feel free to reach out to me. That's my email on the screen, cihanacho at jobberman.com. Please feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to have your job opportunities out there, if you're looking for qualified hires, you're looking for interns, or volunteers or remote workers, you know, because we've seen that trend where we have um, a lot of, you know, remote working opportunities. Please feel free to reach out to me, and that's my phone number as well. I'll be happy to um, give you more information and onboard you onto the Jobberman um, applicant tracking system. Okay, so um, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much, guys, for sticking with us. Um, we, um, as promised, we hope to get the slides from um, Indidi, and once we get it, we'll share with everyone. Okay, so um, apologies once again for the network issues. So please feel free to, you know, be a part of all these amazing opportunities. Make sure you go on nourishingafrica.com. Um, the links, I think, the, yes, the links have been shared in the chat. Please go on Nourishing Africa. Check out the amazing opportunities in the African set, in the agricultural sector for you. And also, come on, Jebberman, if you're looking to hire qualified candidates for free, we'll help you um, get qualified candidates and put up ba free basic listings on Jobberman. If you also want to be a part of the free soft skills training, talking about business etiquette, emotional intelligence, self-awareness, um, you know, critical thinking, you want to learn to make right decisions, creativity and innovation. We are teaching this for free in our soft skills training. So please make sure you're a part of it. Make sure your team members are a part of this as well. Okay, these are many more opportunities we have um, under the Jobberman Youth Engagement Arm. Um, okay, so please feel free to connect with us at connect at jobberman.com or you can reach out to me with my email shared earlier. So uh, we've e exactly 1 p.m. Okay, uh, thank you very much for being with us once again. And we look forward to connecting with you on our auto platforms. Have a good day, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank you.